Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. Here's your weekly dose of inspiration to build a creative habit, one drawing at a time. Brought to you by Sketchbook School. Today we're going to use India ink. First of all, don't use India ink in your fountain pen, unless you want to kill your pen. I think it's the gum arabic in the ink, but anyway, it will ruin your pen. And why would you use a fountain pen if there are so many other tools you can use combined with India ink? I've got some water here, brushes, a dip pen, a water brush that I filled with diluted India ink, and a bamboo pen. Let's start with the dip pen. If you want clean lines, don't dip your pen too deep into the ink. You'll need to dip and pick up new ink each time you run out. It's pretty easy to control your line, but the fun is also in the fact that you don't have a constant flow of ink, like with a regular pen, so you can make use of that characteristic. You can go a bit bolder, pick up a bit more ink and press the nib a little harder to the paper as you are drawing. See the difference in line? This will take longer to dry. The bamboo pen is a lot of fun to use as well. And actually, you could even use a stick or a twig. It doesn't have to be bamboo. The tip of this bamboo pen has been cut off flat, so it's a bit like a calligraphy nib, only very thick and bold. And when the ink runs out, the drier lines are really nice too. It's a bit like charcoal. You can use the tip upside down as well, if you want thinner lines. Now the ink on these letters at the top has dried, and that means they are water resistant now. See, if I add water, nothing happens. So you can paint your India ink drawings with watercolors once the ink has completely dried. On these bold letters, the ink hasn't dried yet. So when I add water, the ink fans out. I can make use of that and activate the ink to create shadows, for example, or I could use the ink to color the letters completely. So, India ink is water soluble, but once it's dried, it's waterproof. If you don't want to be messing around with an ink bottle and water on location, you could dilute some India ink with water and fill a water brush with it. This way, you'll always have a tool to add quick shadows with, for example. So, if I would draw a little self portrait, I can use thicker lines by adding more pressure to the pen combined with very thin clean lines for hatching, for example. Then I can use my diluted ink to add some shadows. Although I think the diluted ink is a bit too dark, yikes! Well, while it's still wet, I can blur that a bit by adding water. Using the bamboo pen, I'll do another sketch. While the ink is still wet, I use water and carefully touch some of the lines with my brush to activate the ink and create shading. The wetter the ink, the darker the gray tone. To add a drop shadow, I'll use the water brush again. You can use a water brush for brush lettering too. You'll have a constant flow rather than needing to dip your brush into the ink over and over. Well, there are many possible ways to use your tools and combine them. So give it a try! and have fun. And if you want to learn more, sign up for the sample course at Sketchbook School. It's free, so go to sketchbookschool.com and join.